Wouldn't it be nice to start every day feeling unstoppable, be full of energy and ready to tackle everything on your to-do list and still have time for yourself? Imagine if every day were as productive as you've always wanted it to be. That is what I thought and hoped for as I went into trying the Andrew Huberman morning routine. Now, for those of you who don't know, Andrew Huberman is a neuroscientist who bases all of his advice on science. And in the last few years, he has become a very well-known expert in the field of the brain and peak performance. And I wanted to try it because even though I wake up in the morning, I've always found it really hard to get myself to wake up early and actually feel like waking up and not have to force myself out of bed. So to solve this problem, I took on the challenge of following Andrew Huberman's morning routine for a week as a student to give it a try and share my honest feedback from my own experience so that all of you can learn something and find value and apply it into your own lives. So without further delay, Let's get started. The first thing Andrew Huberman recommends is drinking a glass of water right after waking up to hydrate yourself. I drank a tall glass of water mixed with a pinch of salt. And initially I found this challenging because drinking a lot of water first thing in the morning can be tough and you just don't feel like it. But it's important to realize that your body needs hydration after you've spent eight hours without eating or drinking anything. And the salt in the water helps your body retain the water. So ensuring that you get hydrated, which is really important for your brain and your performance to be at its best. Then the next part of the morning routine is to start your day by getting exposure to natural sunlight as soon as possible after waking up. And it is recommended to aim for about 10 to 30 minutes of morning light. This helps to reset your circadian rhythm, boost your mood and your alertness. Now I live in an area where there is ample direct sunlight and so I can just step into the balcony at any time of the year and it will be sunny sometimes a little too sunny, in fact. But if you live in an area where there isn't enough direct sunlight, you can always opt for a device such as the Verilux light that mimics the beneficial light coming from the sun, and you can use it in the morning for the same purpose. Now, as students, we tend to be so into our books and then the rest of the time into our phones or devices that we rarely go out anymore. Which is why I think it is so important to get the sunlight we need right in the morning because not only is it important for our overall health, but also the rays that come from the sun directly boost our energy levels. In my experience, every time I went out and sat in the sun, the early morning grogginess that you feel right after you wake up, you know, when you don't want to talk to anybody and just don't want to start your day, that feeling immediately vanishes and a sense of freshness takes over. And this was just what we need as students in our day, to feel fresh and good and happy and ready to start the day and ready to start studying. Now it's time for the next step, which is meditation. Now meditation is so, so, so important for our mental health and to keep ourselves grounded in the present moment because we have so many goals we want to get good at. So good grades, we want to get a head start in our career, we want to have great social life, we want to start earning and because of it we can often lose sight of all the amazing experiences that can be found in the present moment. Now you can choose a meditation that works best for you. Personally, I enjoy a meditation that is specifically designed for students and I will link that meditation below in the description as well. This meditation is just a simple five minute meditation designed for students and it's completely free. It incorporates breathing, coming into the present moment and helpful affirmations that will set the tone for your productive day. Now Huberman suggests any form of physical activity in the morning to decrease stress hormones. So this was the main difference from my usual routine and I did my weight training and exercise in the morning. 
Breakfast is a really important meal of the day because it sets the tone for the foods you'll crave. And if you have a breakfast rich in protein, fats, and carbs in the morning, then you will have enough energy to get through the day. For this week, I started my day with some eggs, bread, and a handful of walnuts because this balance keeps me full and focused until lunch. And I don't like to do much effort in the morning, so I keep my breakfast the same for the whole week. But of course, you can feel free to alter it as per your needs. Just make sure it has a balance of protein, carbs, and fats. The cold shower is a very spoken about part of this routine, and it sounds daunting, right? But cold exposure has been proven to reduce inflammation and increase mental alertness. So I started with just 30 seconds of cold water at the end of my regular shower, and now I can handle a full minute. And it always feels refreshing, and afterwards I feel even more awake. Now, for the last 15 minutes of my morning, I followed the last step, which was to journal. And as a student, I like to write down my three goals for the day in a small notebook so that the main focus of my day is determined and I know where to put most of my time and energy. So for your goals, you can have either the chapters you're about to cover, the assignments you have due, or any chores, any major chores that you have. And try to keep your goals down to like three to five so that you don't overwhelm yourself and you actually get through them. And that's it. Then the rest of my day is filled with blocks of deep work in which I either study or I work on my projects such as my book or more exciting things you'll hear about very soon. Now, as a student who studies privately, I get to choose when I wake up and when I start my day. So I start my day around 8 a.m. But if you are someone who goes to school, then waking up around two hours before you have to leave will give you enough time to complete the entire routine. Okay, I followed the Huberman's morning routine for a week, and here is the difference I noticed in my performance while following this routine and which parts I enjoyed and will be keeping as part of my life and which parts I won't be as a student. So the water in the morning definitely woke me up because when I wake up in the morning, I personally feel groggy. So I liked how it immediately gave me alertness. And I know it is also based in science to be good for me. Next, the sunlight. Now I will be definitely doing this more often as this was the best part of the morning routine because it made me feel happy. Like, literally, I went in the sun, sat for 10 minutes, and when I came back, I felt so happy, like I had just taken a pill for joy or something. It really made a difference. Then the next part of the morning routine was exercise. Now, personally, I want to get straight into my studies and put my best alertness and focus when I know that my brain is capable to focus better at this time. So I'd rather study at that time than go to the gym for an hour. So I altered the routine a little to be just a 15 minute walk in the morning, then study and then around afternoon or in the evening when I have more energy or my, when my body feels more awake, and capable of lifting weights, then I'll work out. Then we have the cold shower. Now the cold shower was a little tough to get into, but once I was in, it felt refreshing and good, especially in the heat and the weather, it really did feel nice. So that was my take on Andrew Huberman's morning routine, and I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're interested in getting that free meditation for students I spoke about earlier, then you can click right here to get that video. And until next time, keep learning.